guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blow Daz. I'm Office Blow Caden. Here we are on the Sports Reactions. Yep. On the Sports Channel. Sports Edition. Sports Channel. Mm. So if sports is for your thing, uh, like and subscribe if you don't mind. Yeah. That's all we can say really, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah. Bit of NBA. 25 wildest facts about the NBA. Probably learned something new about it that we didn't I know. I think there'll be loads of stuff on here that I won't know. Don't know yeah, I wouldn't have a clue about. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really that clued up on the ins and outs of the NBA. From a, I'm not really watched it a lot, but I don't know a lot of the uh, facts that might, I don't know, be obscure. Let's say. Yeah. Mm, let's, get anyway, into it, let's get into it. Twenty-five wildest facts about the NBA. From the time a player was legitimately traded for a straight-up copy machine to Giannis's acting career before joining the NBA, these are the twenty-five wildest facts about the NBA. Everyone knows about Kobe Bryant's infamous 81-point game, but there are other equally impressive Kobe records you might not know about. During a four-game streak in 2007, the Black Mamba averaged 56 points over a seven-day span. In that week, Bryant dropped more 50 pieces than D. Wade had in his entire career, as many as Carl Malone did in 19 years, and more than Tim Duncan, Clyde Drexler, and Paul Pierce combined. That's impressive. But what's completely bizarre? Every year, there are about 500 players in the NBA, so the chances of anyone sharing the exact same birthday are pretty slim. And for them to all play on the same team, well, that's virtually impossible. But what if we told you that one team had not one, not two, but three players who were born on the same date, and they all played the same position? In 2015-16, the Dallas Mavericks employed Darren Williams, J.J. Barea, and Raymond Felton, who were all born on June 26, 1984. That's like a billion to one chance. Mm. But what are the chances of you destroying your entire NBA career? just because you're a sound sleeper. Well, that's exactly what happened to B.J. Tyler, a fast six foot one point guard and the 20th pick in the 1994 NBA draft. As he was preparing for his second NBA season, B.J. decided to take a little nap in the practice facility. Now, that wouldn't be a problem if he didn't forget to take off the ice packs he put around his ankles. See, due to the prolonged sleep, the ice caused severe nerve damage in his ankles which resulted in Tyler losing his quickness and never playing another NBA game. Imagine wow, that. how mad's that? Wow. I, I never knew that. No, that's mad, that, that is quite crazy. That's thing. pure unfortunate uh, look, that, isn't it? I know. Wow. Only but this next year. player was projected to be so extraordinarily slow that he actually got traded for some office supplies. Kyle Korver <laughs> was one of the best shooters in NBA history. <laughs> but because of his lack of athleticism, he was drafted by the Nets with the 51st pick. However, the Nets never thought much of Korver, so they quickly traded him to Philadelphia for money compensation. And to make things even more embarrassing, they used this money for entry fees to play in the summer league. And with the leftover money, they bought a copy machine. I should have been your teammate. You should have been Jersey, right? Yeah. yeah they... Who did they draft? No, they sold me. Honestly, they, they, they paid for Summer League and they bought a copy machine. <laughs> the Nets are known for making some of the worst trades in NBA history, but trading one of the best shooters for a freaking copy machine? Huh, that has to be top of the list. But let's talk about one of Korver's teammates, LeBron James, who has stockpiled records and feats like few others. And you probably know that Bron averages 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists for his career. But did you know that in his 1,600-plus NBA games, the King has never had a game with 27, 7, and 7? Whoa. An even more unbelievable LeBron stat line is that he has more playoff wins than the Raptors, Grizzlies, Hornets, Pelicans, and the Timberwolves combined. Also, combined. James has played more playoff games than 50% of all NBA franchises and has more wins than any franchise in the last 25 years. But that's not all. LeBron famously broke Kareem's scoring record in 2023, and he did it by being insanely consistent. Coming to the end of the third quarter, LeBron James has shot in history. LeBron James has scored 10 plus points in 1,124 straight games and counting. And in this millennium, James has scored more points in the playoffs than seven NBA franchises. Grizzlies, Wizards, Hornets, Pelicans, Knicks, Timberwolves, and the Kings. To be fair, 
it's not that hard to score more points than the Kings, who recently broke their playoff curse after missing the postseason for 16 straight years, wow. which is an NBA record. Even the defunct Supersonics, who haven't existed as a franchise since 2007, have won a playoff series more recently than the Kings. But what about records that are outright weird? If you've never heard of Eddie Robinson, we don't blame you, as he only played five unremarkable years in the NBA between 2000 and 2004. But what makes Robinson unique is that he played for two teams, not so weird, the Hornets and the Bulls. Now, he recorded 969 points and 382 rebounds for Chicago. And then, with Charlotte, he scored exactly 969 wow. points and 382 rebounds. What might be even more bizarre is how Pete Maravich made an unbelievable prediction about his own death. When he was just 26 years old, the Pistol said in an interview that he didn't want to have a 10-year NBA career and then die of a heart attack at 40. He then proceeded to have a 10-year NBA career and die of a heart attack at 40. Garland, as you mentioned, Pete Maravich was playing the game he loved and gave so much of his life too when he died this morning in Pasadena, California. Well. And speaking of hearts, this next player has quite an unusual quirk about his. Randy Foy was born with one of the rarest conditions, called situs invertus, which means that he was born with his organs in reverse. Foy's heart is on the right side of his chest, while his liver is on the left. While he was playing, Foy was the only player in major American sports leagues with this condition. Still, this didn't affect his play, and he carved out a solid 11-year career. I was going to say, would that even affect you, really? I don't know. I guess everything's just working in, in the opposite order, isn't it? Yeah, opposite, not all the opposite, sort of like... Thing, but I don't know, I've never heard of that before. Me either. And there is one very famous NBA player who also played with a condition, and that condition was being drunk. <laughs> Manute Bowl is the tallest and probably the skinniest player in NBA history. And in order to put on weight, he used to drink beer before games. Supposedly, <laughs> Manute never played a game sober, which makes his feat of hitting six <laughs> three-pointers in one half even more impressive. But what's equally impressive is when NBA players kill it on the silver screen. Oh, <clears throat> Shaq, if you're watching this, yeah, we're not talking about Kazam. If you've never heard about the movie Dead Europe, you'll be surprised to know that way before one player ever got to the NBA, he kicked off his acting career. We're talking about none other than Giannis Antetokounmpo. We know what you're asking yourself. How the hell did a teenage Giannis, who was struggling to make ends meet, ever end up in a movie? Well, as it turns out, Dead Europe's director, Tony Kravitz, was filming the movie in Athens, and he wanted to cast a family who could play refugees, yet seem normal and open-hearted. Giannis and his mother, who also appears in the scene, applied for the job because they needed money. And they were a natural fit, because their life experience perfectly described those of their characters. Looks like Giannis was destined to be a star one way or another. However, Giannis was not the first Nigerian to play in the NBA. It's in fact Hakeem Olajuwon, who is from the same Yoruba tribe as Giannis' parents. Hakeem's path to the NBA is equally as remarkable as Giannis's, because just like Giannis, Hakeem discovered basketball very late, when he was already 15 years old. But thanks to his soccer background, Olajuwon quickly finessed the game and developed impeccable footwork that would make him one of the best centers of all time. He's one of only four NBA players to ever record a quadruple double with a stat line of 18 points, 16 rebounds, 11 blocks, and 10 assists. This, however, is not a story about that game, but of another game that happened three weeks earlier. The Dream recorded 29 points, 18 rebounds, 10 assists, and 11 blocks, meaning he had two quadruple double games in one month, which is beyond crazy. How many have done it? Except three days after that game. The end. Did he say four? He said there's not many, didn't they? Did he say four? I think, I think he said something like four. One or four people or something. You would imagine it'll be a little bit more, though, I reckon. I know it was obviously yeah. like an incredible stat line to get that. Yeah, but, but you would have thought more, right? Yeah. yeah. Some big yeah, yeah, stats on here, right? I know, right? She'll stripped him of one assist, which is a shame because he would be the only player with two career quadruple doubles. But what about the negative scoring records? Do you know the record for minutes played in a game without a single point? Well, if you don't, we bet Wilson Chandler does, because he's the owner of that horrible record, as he played a full 48 minutes without ever scoring once. Now, to be fair, Chandler shares this record with Dennis Rodman and Horace Grant, who also went scoreless for the full duration of one game. And while we're talking about Chandlers, let's mention Tyson Chandler, who was a co-owner of one very strange accomplishment. In 2012, Chandler won the Defensive Player of the Year Award. 
and he didn't even make first team all defense. To make things even weirder, and a clear sign that the voting system was flawed, the same thing happened again in 2013, this time with Marc Gasol. But how was that even possible? It's because the Defensive Player of the Year was voted for by the media and was separate from all defensive voting, which was voted for by the NBA coaches, until the NBA finally changed this rule in 2014. Something similar happened in 1973, when Dave Cowens won the MVP, but didn't make the All-NBA First Team. What? That's the, that, it's things like that that do my head in sport, when, especially when the media get involved. I know, It's yeah. like when I see things that come up and it's, and you just, you know that who's going to win it. Everybody knows certain, certain things that people are going to win. Yeah. And all the fans know who watch it day in, day out, they know who's going to win. The media gets involved or something like that, it goes to someone totally random, and you're like, it's like the Ballon d'Or last year went to Messi. He's never in the. Did he even, I don't even think he got in the. Uh, he didn't do anything last team year. Of the year. No, didn't do anything. Won the Ballon d'Or, but didn't get in the team yeah. of the year or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm not taking into consideration the World Cup because that was the year before. I know. But yeah. it was uh, the way they were just geared on that what, what it was, and he didn't include the World Cup. If his like, name wasn't Messi, he wouldn't have won it. No, I know, exactly, exactly. But it was just it's ridiculous when they get involved, and it's same same in every sport. Mm. All the regular match or game going fans or the regular fans of that specific that specific sport know exactly who's going to win, mm. and that's what matters more for me than anything. The fans know, and that's that's all that's important in sport. The rest of them can do one. Mm. All the all the journalists, media. But when we're talking about NBA awards and the mess that comes with voting. There used to be an NBA award that aimed to exclude all this nonsense and be purely based on statistics. It was called the IBM Award, you know, like the computer company. And it actually looked like a laptop because it was also sponsored by IBM, the computer company. The winner was determined by a computer formula, which measured the player's statistical contribution to his team and should have decided who's the most impactful player in the league. It was the statistical equivalent of the MVP award and, in theory, seemed great. But the problem was that it heavily favored rebounding and discounted winning, which yielded some improbable winners, like Dennis Rodman over Michael Jordan in 1992 and Dikembe Mutombo over Shaq in 1999. But after 19 years and 11 different winners, the IBM award was discontinued in 2002, which seems like yesterday if you think about how crazy the NBA used to be when it first started. For example, in 1938, there was a jump ball after every made basket. This basically meant that if you had a strong rebounder, you'd win every jump ball and have a tremendous advantage over the opponent. And that's yes, maybe that less a unusual popular. than the fact that the Miami Heat used to be in the Western Conference. Miami joined the NBA in 1988 together with the Hornets and the Eastern Conference couldn't get both teams. So the NBA put the heat in the West, even though Miami is literally on the East Coast. The next season, the Timberwolves joined and Miami permanently switched to the East. But when it comes to the Western Conference, it was long <laughs> That was a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. Why would you, you'd bother put Charlotte because they're more West. Yeah, you put, well, you know, I'm sure there's others as well that are further West. Yeah, but they, Miami, Miami's yeah, right on the beach, literally. But they're also the new team. You can't have a team that's been there for so yeah, long. They just yeah, change yeah. them. I mean. Dominated by only two states, and the 2023 Nuggets are the only West team since 1979 to win the NBA title outside of California and Texas. And speaking of Texas, let's talk about Jason Terry, who won the NBA title with Dallas in 2011 and is probably the most overconfident man in NBA history. See, before the 2011 season even started, Terry had tattooed the Larry O'Brien trophy on wow. his right biceps as motivation for himself and his teammates to win it all that year. When he first got the tattoo, I said he was crazy. I didn't say it to him, but I've never been to the NBA Finals, and for him to have that now, wow. And he got that tattoo in October, and it means a lot with what we've been through, teammate Deshaun Stevenson. However, this is not the only off-the-wall story about Jason Terry. This man was one of the most superstitious players in NBA history, and he had some rituals he would never deter from. Jason would eat chicken. Superstitious, but he'd have a tattoo of the bloody trophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And only chicken before every game. If he missed consecutive shots in the first quarter, he would immediately change his shoes before the next quarter. 
But by far the craziest ritual he had was that he slept in the opposing team's shorts the night before he played them. So if he was going on a two-week road trip, this meant he had to travel with 10 different pairs of shorts from the opposing teams, and he had to plan exactly which shorts to pack. <laughs> Jason ways. Terry was once a teammate of Shaquille O'Neal, and this next unbelievable story is called the Six Degrees of Shaq, which once was also featured on Inside the NBA. This is a streak that dates back till 1984. What? Every champion in the NBA has had a player who's been a teammate of Shaquille O'Neal. No way. No way. Yes. You see, between 1977 and 2021, all NBA championship teams had at least one of Shaq's teammates on their roster. <laughs> and as the final interesting nugget of this video, we'll mention something that doesn't exist anymore. It's the old Twitter logo, which was named Larry after Larry Bird. And this is just that. speculation, but the new Twitter logo is probably named after Elon's son, who will admit has a cool name. I mean, it's just X, the letter X. Um, and then the AE is like pronounced Ash. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, A12, A12 is my contribution. But he has a lot of ground to make up to compare to Larry Legend. Mm. I never, knew, I never knew that Twitter bird was named after Larry, Larry Bird. I didn't know. I didn't know it was called Larry. Yeah. No, me neither. Just learn it then, if it's true. Yeah, it might not be true. Yeah, it might not be. Yeah. But it's some mad stats Who names a kid X? Like, well, sort of thing that uh, Kanye West may do. You know, yeah, sort of like... Uh, to do that. It's just some weird, like... Uh, his, I, I love... called, his daughter's called North West. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good stat, me. And uh, then I was... I was reading through some the other day and you know, I was telling you some of the stats that I come across. I think when you when you hear a mad stat, it just blows your mind, doesn't it? It seems like there's a stat like all the time, like a new stat comes about. Oh, like, records are broken, aren't they, quite often? Yeah, and it know. happens all the time. It's yeah. like a stat for everything. Like Now they're measuring a lot more in sports. Yeah. You get more stats that come out, but that's uh, yeah, some good ones. I enjoyed that. That was a good some video. Good yeah. facts. I like Interesting. Them. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.